The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. All right. Really excited about tonight. Welcome, everyone. I am Lisa Castro, and I am so excited to bring this topic to you. I guess I'm excited about every topic that has to do with healthy lifestyle. And we have a couple of panelists that are going to be on today, too. My brother, David Miller, and my wonderful husband, Jaime Castro. So as we get started here, um, I'm going to be sharing my PowerPoint for those that are coming on. It's, people are loading on real quickly. Okay, somebody says they can't hear me. Are other people able to hear? Can you uh, chat if you can hear? Could be the person that's saying that they just can't hear. Yes, everyone else can hear. So maybe it, just turning your volume on on your, um, on your screen or on your keyboard there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that you guys can really see what uh, we're gonna be talking about visually. So here I, uh, I, with Optavia, again, I'm Lisa Castro, and so glad that you could be on tonight. We're gonna be talking about the topic of exercise, the five W's and an H. Anybody remember what that stood for if you ever took journalism or maybe even English in, in school? It's, you know, the, the, well, I'll just show you. Who, what, when, where, why, and how of exercise. That's what we're going to be talking about. That is not me. That'd be nice if that was, but uh, this is a lady that's uh, obviously been working out. And it might be something you're going for, maybe not, but we're going to be talking about anything from what Dr. A refers to as NEAT, N-E-A-T, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and then also EAT, exercise activity, or excuse me, um, energy. You're where one, I'll just put it this way. One is where you're intentionally exercising to be able to burn calories, to get your heart rate up, to really go like go to the gym or do some other activities. Uh, neat is more like, you know, standing versus sitting, walking to, to you know, further from the parking lot, uh, taking the stairs instead of the elevator. So you're going to find something no matter where you're at on your journey, something that you can fit into your program as we go through this. Okay. So who, what, when, where, why, and how of exercise. First, we're going to be talking about the why. I'm going out of order, but we're doing it in the order that Optavia would have us do in the way that I think as well. And I know a lot of people that stay motivated are the ones that are thinking, why am I doing this? Why am I putting exercise into my program? And we'll be talking a little bit later about when that would be appropriate and for whom. So why? If you don't know why you're doing it, you can lose your motivation pretty easily. And we have learned if somebody's just wanting to get, go down on the scale, that can actually lose its motivation at times too because it's, you know, if their weight starts to go up a little bit or whatever, it's like people can get discouraged or they way over exercise trying to make that happen. They're not having enough calories, then it gets complicated. So if you know that exercise is about helping you create a body that can do all kinds of other things than what you set out to do originally by just eating a healthy meal or a healthy lifestyle in other ways, exercise can give you the vitality and energy to do what you like doing and doing more of it. So here's a picture of my husband and myself. And this is a, on the left-hand side, you're going to see a picture of us. And I was actually smiling and posing for the camera because I thought I looked pretty darn good there because I'd lost five pounds already. You know how we get so optimistic when we start our weight loss journey and they start seeing possibilities? I started seeing possibilities. And a lot of people may not have seen that photo. That was 15 years ago in June. And then the picture of us is more recent about hiking and enjoying life. And I just love the fact that it became more about living an active lifestyle than it was about getting to a healthy weight. Although that's part of it. They're not, they work some, you know, together to create that. And just showing you a little bit of life of how that affected our relationship. I don't know if you can see that picture of my hubby and I smooching in the middle of the picture. Somebody took a candid photo there and I love capturing that moment. And then us traveling together and having experiences together. And we thank each other on a regular basis for creating health and living a healthy lifestyle and taking care of ourselves. My husband on a very regular basis says to me, thank you for taking care of yourself. Or I'll say the same to him. 
Now, I'm going to let him share his story after we go through some of the things that I have done for physical activity. Now, not all of them are like exerting myself and others are very much so. I've done everything from doing those rock climbing walls. I love hiking trails, especially the more rocks and hilly stuff. David and Jamie have been on the, the hike up to Stewart Falls annually, the same as I have. Doing power walks along the beach. I just actually took some pictures this morning on Siesta Key of the power walk that I took there. Kayaking, jet skiing, ATVing, running, walking, uh, climbing stairs, running up the stairs, just doing weight training is probably my favorite of all. So if you guys have some favorite activities, put them in the chat. We would love to know what you love doing. Or maybe you haven't even started exercising. Just kind of put it out there because we want this to be interactive. Even though, even though we can't hear your voice, we can see your words. All right, so I'm going to introduce my husband, Jaime Castro. Can you take, a, take it from here and share a little bit about when you created health and fit, or fitness in your life and how long you've been practicing and what you love doing? Well, thank you, Lisa. Actually, it was not long after you did. Uh, if I just go uh, re rewind a little bit, I had been active when I was in much, much younger years. That's a long time ago now. But uh, uh, that the, the desire kind of waned after a while, and of course, uh, I became unhealthy. But not long after you did, that I joined and became healthy. And I, it was just uh, the, the things that I could do now, uh, I you know, wish everybody can. And I think one of the other things is that we have an obligation, and maybe some people don't like that word, but an obligation to take care of ourselves for our family, our loved ones. Uh, because, uh, hey, it, it, it helps us physically, mentally, and uh, we're just in a better place when we are feeling better. No doubt. So what do you love doing the most? Well, um, it, anything. I, almost, uh, it, it, if, if I could get up and just go out and, and try an adventure, I probably would. Um, I mean, I, I, I like riding bike. I'm not as, uh, as uh, an expert as David is. I also like riding motorcycles and uh, um, if I could do that more often, I would. Uh, but uh, oh, oh, anything that's out there that gets the heart rate going make you, uh, makes them, uh, not only the body feel good, but also the mind. Yeah, I got to say, I remember us having a conversation one time and people would say things about saying I was obviously fit. And I said to my husband one uh, a few years ago, I said, wouldn't it be cool if we were seen as the fit couple, no matter how old we get in, in uh, Octavia, that we actually strive to be that example and inspiration. And I love when Jamie really kicked up his game and uh, really started weight training. He was more into cycling, but not doing so much in the weight training area. And we went into a hotel restaurant uh, probably about, well, during Hurricane Irma. And the guy that waited on us, uh, he says, uh, sorry, sir, we don't allow guns in the restaurant. <laughs> I thought, all right, we've arrived. So it's like, you know, you never know how much impact or who's going to notice your fitness level, but what, who really notices it? The people living in the body and the kind of quality of life. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, I, I would. And I even see the picture of you with Dr. A. Uh, you guys went mountain biking with him up at, in Utah. And David's in this picture of you guys kayaking together. And just the experiences you can have when you have the energy and fitness to be able to join others in doing it. It helps with that community aspect as well. True. I mean, you can enjoy things when you're able to be more active and, and also have experiences with other people. That's the good thing of, of, uh, about being in, in good health. Yeah, now I'm looking at some of the chat. We got hiking and biking and dancing, stairs, spinning, love body pump, weight training, uh, swimming. Uh, let's see, what else do we have going on here that's a little, somebody's saying walking on the treadmill, having my daily quiet time with Jesus, accomplishing two in one. That's actually when I do my personal growth as well. And I uh, might listen to sermons or a book, an audio book, kind of, you know, working out the brain and the, or the mind and the body at the same time, horseback riding. So great things that are being mentioned there. And I want to show you another why. This is a, one of our health coaches. She sent this to me because this is what she was doing on the last day of, our, of, of uh, April. And here it was, I think, I'm, you know, I'd just been out in the sun all day. And she sends me these pictures. And I thought, isn't this cool? She is in Montana, excuse me, in Oregon, and got to enjoy the snow and to go snowshoeing with her son. Would she have been able to have the time and the money to, or excuse me, the time and the energy to do that in the past? 
you know, she actually became a coach and that's why she has the, you know, the, the time to be able to have that flexibility with her son and the experiences. And she has the fitness because it's been years that she has been a healthy, fit person herself. But she used to work out all the time, but she wasn't getting the weight loss goals that she wanted. So when she started doing Optavia and went on the weight loss part of the journey, she got all aspects of help. And I just love the fact that she's coaching with us and just really creating a quality of life for her and her family as well. Love that photo. All right, so um, going on to the next photo, I wanna just help you guys really get what a why is about. Uh, it's referred to as structural dynamics or also known as structural tension. And tension, I remember hearing that word and I thought that doesn't sound so good, but think about it like a bow and arrow or a rubber band. When you put tension on something, it causes momentum and gets it in action, moving. And if you don't have enough tension, let's say on a rubber band, it's wobbly. A bow and arrow, the arrow is just going to drop if you don't have enough tension, but too much tension on a bow and arrow could lead to a break in the, the string or, or injury for that matter. But if you put that right amount of tension that gets you moving forward, keeps you on target for what you want, you're going to be more likely to accomplish what you want. Okay, so then the other part of that equation is what is that, that desire, that dream, that that things that it's going to cause tension. I jokingly kind of put this one in there, but if, let's say a guy out there, you have this vision, you're going to be the Hulk. You're like so muscular. You're so strong. You get, this is how you see yourself. And you're like, I am so on fire. I'm going to do this. And you're just really psyching yourself up so that this will be your vision. And maybe this is where you really want to go. I mean, vision what you really want, but a little bit of stretch to it, because if it's not a stretch, it's going to be a very weak goal and it's going to be easier to give up, but not so much again that this might be a little overkill because what might be the current reality is this photo. Ah, okay. There's a big gap between those two, but if you're willing to work for that vision, even if it might be challenging at the beginning and you got a long way to go, are you willing to work for it? Is it something that you can continue to do on that journey so that you will have the outcome you want and continue to put those goals as you build one, you put another one on top so you can keep going forward? Because what have we been doing the last 15 years is continually saying, what else could I do? Improve in all areas of my health. Here's another vision is, you know, a vision of doing yoga, stretching on the beach and just taking it in or is your current reality and as is your current, current reality that just stretching is a big deal, but at least you're putting that effort in. Now, some of us aren't may have not been exercising at all, and we'll give you a little guidelines on what that looks like, but first know what you want, whatever it is, let your coach know, and then we'll look at your current reality, what's the difference between, what steps would you need to go from where you're at to where you want to be, and you get to call it. Okay, so now that we're going back to who and when to do exercise. So that's, that um, is a kind of a bigger question beyond just right below the why, knowing why you're doing it, but who should, who could, and when is it appropriate? So I'm showing this picture. This was me before I started. I'm smiling. This is my sister-in-law took that picture knowing she's going to be sharing Optavia with me. And my hand is in motion to go, don't take my picture. Because I was so ashamed of how I'd let myself go. And I had a background of health, uh, health and fitness in, in school, but I'd let myself go. And uh, obviously worked on creating health and fitness. And, uh, you know, when is that right time? So the person on the left had not been exercising, couldn't exercise. I had a, a, an autoimmune issue that kept me from uh, being able to exert myself or I'd end up in bed. So that wasn't good timing for me. But now, obviously, I'm fit, I'm healthy, I'm vibrant, and there is no limitations on what I can do other than at 5-1, I don't think I'm going to be the center of a basketball team, at least not a professional team anytime soon. And then, uh, then how about this uh, guy on the right-hand side? He is running. Is that, you know, Dr. A would say, would that be a healthy choice for somebody that it'd be probably better to wait till they got to a healthier weight and then incorporate exercise? Now, two to three weeks into the program, a walking program is great, but much beyond that, you'd want to check with your healthcare professional before starting any exercise program. Work with a physical fitness trainer possibly to set up a program, but check with the one that's going to gradually start you not the one that's going to try to kill you that first time around, or you might not want to exercise the next time around. So 
the what and when. This is the fun part. I'm going to take you through quite a few options. And then that we get to a certain point, I'm going to have my brother share his journey. But what could you be doing for exercise? That neat point and the eat points, exercise, activity, thermogenesis, the on purpose, and the other one that you're just doing things to get more movement in your day instead of sitting, standing, that kind of thing. So see if you recognize these things as we go through and see if you can think of which things would I see myself doing? What things am I doing now? What things would I like to do if I could get myself in the good shape to do it and have the proper nutrition, get down to that healthy weight? But I'm going to encourage you, if you are in the weight loss phase of your program and you're on the five and one, some of these activities are going to be too much for you on the five and one. You're going to actually cause your body to crash a little bit. You're going to feel fatigued because you don't have the nutrients and the calories to support burning this many calories. So keep that in mind where you're at. And if you want to do exercise while you're working or on the five and one, you may have to adjust your program to accommodate that. But it's so much better just to stay on the five and one. Limit your exercise, starting the walking around two to three weeks into the program, and then get to your healthy weight. You can incorporate a little bit more exercise along the way if your body tolerates it. But I encourage people to hold off till you go through transition. As you're going through transition, then you can start incorporating more exercise. And after you go through transition and you're at that healthy weight, go crazy if you want, but just know that you're getting the proper nutrition for it. So we have a program called the four and two, a three and three. And then there's other things that you can work with a trainer to see if they can help you at that phase too, or nutrition supported or at, with Optavia. So here we go. Here's something. My favorite things are to do things at the beach. It made me think of green eggs and ham. Do you guys remember Dr. Seuss? Where do you want to do the exercise? What kind of exercise? Do you want to do the weight training in the gym or do you want to do it on the beach? Do you want to do the paddling on a lake or do you want to do it on a board? Do you want to? And so you get to think about where would you enjoy working out. I like a big variety. That's what keeps me going after all these years of what else could I fit in? How could I do it differently? How could I put a variation on that? Even my own weight training is different on a day-to-day -day basis so that I get a variety of things that keep it interesting and fun and it works my body different to keep me going. So it could be kayaking. Now, some people are leisurely kayaking. These guys look like they're taking it pretty serious for the day. They know what they're doing. They're equipped for it. It might just be a little tootling. You rented a kayak for that one vacation, but it's fun. No matter what, if that's something you want to go out there and be around water, maybe see a dolphin pop up if it's in the ocean or just uh, going along a, a river, you know, what, what does it look like for you? Try to really actively engage your imagination of being out there. And if a little fear comes in there, say, but how could I? Just ask yourself, how could I? but I still encourage you to do that at a healthy weight. But some of these, if you're just leisurely kayaking, you could even do that probably on the five and one. Check with your health coach on that. Okay, so golf. Anybody golf out there? David, I know you golf. Jamie says he hacks at it. Um, <laughs> and so if you want a good workout and you're wanting to do more intentional activity, then you could just walk the whole course and you're going to get burn more calories, get your heart rate up and be intentional and have that social time as well as the gathering. Or you might want to get in a cart and just walk between holes if you're on the five and one, but you could still get your body moving. Or you could go bike riding, tootling along the little basket with the dog in the back. Anybody relate to that one? Because when I'd ask somebody if they, what they wanted to do and they said bicycling, I would think of my, my husband in his racing outfit but they were thinking more like this. So really, what is your vision of what it would look like? And then share that with your coach. Because, you know, some of us use it as commuting and others get on the racing bike and they go for it. And speaking of going for it, this is where I get the privilege of introducing my, my brother, who is Mr. Athlete here. He is hardcore. David, you are my personal health coach. And I am so glad you and Terry Miller uh, shared this program with me. Who knows where I'd be today, but I sure wouldn't be living the life that I do today. And I'm so grateful and that fitness is such a key part of my life. And, and I look to you for that example and inspiration. Welcome. Well, thank you. And uh, that it was totally our pleasure because one of the things that I found in life is that uh, I really love having positive activity in my life. Uh, it makes me feel better. Uh, I like the results, the way, just the way it makes me feel that I'm not living a life that's limited by anything due to my physical uh, abilities. And, and that opens up the door to anything. If you ask me what I like to do the most, 
I'd have to say like cycling or skiing or something because that's the things I usually do the most, but I'll, I'll do anything outdoors uh, and even indoors uh, if, it's, if it sounds like fun. So I don't want to limit myself. Uh, you know, here's, you know, somebody asked me if I wanted to climb a 14er. I, what is a 14er? Well, it's a 14,000 foot peak in Colorado. And I said, sure. I didn't even know what I was getting into, but I said yes because it sounded like fun and I wasn't able, I was able to do it because I, I strategized years in advance for that to happen. And, and if somebody says my son wants to go kayaking with me, yes, I can do that. And I get so many, so many great experiences through that physical activity. Uh, so many memories, so many good times uh, uh, with my boys that I actually uh, set a new goal for myself. Uh, is to be in as good a shape as I was for my sons, for my, for my grandsons. And uh, so I'm working on that, working diligently, making second, uh, uh, secondary choices, like going to work out at the gym, uh, getting my body, uh, the muscle base build up uh, a little bit more, and uh, working on the fitness as well, and being really dedicated to that. Those are really things that uh, I've done over the years, but it really started – at a definitive moment in my life. I uh, basically, uh, we all start out life and we're modeled to on how to eat and how to sleep and how you live your life. But sometimes it doesn't work out as well as you want. And at some point there might be a, like what we call a pain point. Something is that I don't like what's going on here or I see something I don't like, I need to make a change or a decision. So I think every, every creation starts with a decision, a goal, uh, the, the structural tension that you talked about, Lisa, is that um, uh, the decision for me was when our grandfather died, and I'm sure you remember that. I uh, died of a massive stroke, and I was in high school, and it, it really hit me pretty hard, and I was learning about genetics and nutrition and stuff in school, and I knew why it happened. But you don't know how much of it's genetics, how much of it's uh, his lifestyle, uh, so I just made a, just a definitive decision at that point that I was going to make health a priority in my life. And as we went through life, you know, always, no matter how busy it got, I, I made a way. I think I, I had the philosophy of a body in motion stays in motion, a body at rest stays at rest. And I just never want to take the chance of it going to rest because it, it is like that. If you stop, you may not get going again. So I always just made it a positive thing, but you can what I've found through coaching is that people can start up at any point. What I loved about our program is you can get back to square one again, and then act, physical activity will actually be fun. You'll, it'll be a positive mental uh, picture for you and a, and a feeling that you've really enjoyed that process of getting fit. And it really is something you don't want. I, I know a lot of people will go, I want to do a marathon. Well, for me, that's a three-year plan. It's you start slow, you build up, you make every uh, run you do, every walk you do, every run you do, a build up to that over time. And you will enjoy the process through that. And that's one of the things that we, we got a great program to, to get your nutrition and the weight aspect in order. But when you go to the physical side, set yourself up for success. Because if it isn't fun, you won't continue to do it. And that's just, you know, unless you're that rare individual that likes to, that has masochistic tendencies uh, <laughs> that you won't. So I want you to enjoy it. I want you to enjoy physical activity, no matter what it is. I saw tons of different uh, things people love to do. And that is amazing. I, that gets me excited because uh, I know how good your life, what that adds to, adds to the quality of your life and not only your life, but the, the people around you who love doing those types of things with you and want you around for the rest of your life. And these are key things we do for our habits of health to have that longevity and not just longevity, but quality of longevity uh, in your life. So and, and Lisa, uh, again, again, I'm so excited that you decided to pay that forward. You were one of our first clients and you, your success actually drove me to want more success and, uh, and the success for our family. Yeah, I'd love being able to be that inspiration now to turn that totally around and inspire. And we've both been able to inspire our dad to uh, take up fitness, too. He was a couch potato at 64. And uh, he said one day he had so much energy, he couldn't sit anymore. So he went out walking, then he couldn't help himself. And he started running. And then after he started running, he said, gosh, I have so much energy. I want to start biking. And he started biking. And then pretty soon he was saying, I want to swim. And he did his first triathlon. 
and he still just um, was, he was helping us move uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. And as he was finishing up moving us on a Saturday, he says, I think I'm going to do a half marathon tomorrow. <laughs> That's he's 79 years old. And he just decided to do it. And he did. He went the next day and did a half marathon. Okay, how many of us could say that? So, you know, that generational thing. And as David said, he's now been the influence on his son and his grandson sees this fitness. And he's not going to know a different way because of the generations of physical health and energy and fitness and vitality. And I'm just very proud of my dad of how he's really, you know, taken that uh, fitness goal and made it part of his life, just like the rest of us. So what are your goals? What are your goals for your family? And David, I don't know if you want to say anything in regards to dad, but then I also wanted to point out how as a family, we've done more activities than we would have done in the past. Well, you know, I, I mentioned how much I love doing and expressing myself physically uh, with the activity because I always show up the best and I feel the most engaged when I'm doing that. And to have my father be able to, and I'll give you an example, he asked me one day what, what I, races I had coming up and I told him I had a cyclocross race the next day and where's that at? And you know what, I showed up the race and I'm, I'm getting ready and I see him riding by in the race. He's doing the, uh, the master's class ahead of me and I'm like, that, that was my dad, you know? <laughs> So that was so cool. And, and I just love the fact that he is uh, taking his health so seriously and enjoying life uh, like he never has before because he's, he's participated in all these things. So really, really a blessing. It sure is. And to think when my mom or our mom went out on a whitewater rafting trip, when we asked, I thought there's no way my mom's going to do it for one. She would have been afraid to do it and she wouldn't have been at the health to do it. And I think, how old were they when we did the whitewater rafting trip? Was that like... 75th. 71, I think, wasn't she? I think it was 75th birthday. That's crazy. I never would have thought. We're talking somewhere level four rapids in Oregon. So you just never know. So again, what, what adventures would you like to do? And knowing that you're not only doing it for yourself, but you're doing it for the sake of others too, and that's going to inspire them. Um, and then we'll talk about the timing of that. I noticed that was a question in a little bit. But it, now these are the things that do you recognize any of these things that you want to do? Or is this open up your mind to the, your imagination, things that you'd like to do? Do you like to play tennis? Do you ever want to play tennis? Have you done it in the past? Do you want to do it again? Or maybe this is more your racket style is to play badminton. We actually play badminton as a family. It's been a while since we've played it, but my mom liked to play badminton. I think it's fun and you can get really competitive with it or just leisurely do it. How about ping pong? Oh my gosh, David and our brother-in-law, Kelly, when they get going, that's a wild game. I'll tell you, the sweat's pouring when they play, or it could just be dinking around. So just depending on where you're at on your journey and how much effort you put into that. And there's, that's not David this time, but uh, he did something very similar as you saw. So when you go hiking, are you wanting to go like crazy and go extreme and go to crazy cool places to have those adventures and experiences because you have the health to do it? Or you just want to take that leisurely walk out in the woods and just feel good. Or maybe just walking instead of riding a bike or, or excuse me, driving a car, you just walk to places. And then maybe you just want to take Fido for a walk. He's inspiring you to get out and walk. And for his sake, you'll get up there and you'll go. So kayaking, that's a common one that a lot of people had mentioned too. David, had, uh, they lived on a a floating home on the Columbia River, and that was a common thing that they'd do. And we have a kayak at our home on the intercoastal water in, Oregon, in Florida, get mixed up two homes we live in. And then maybe it's not that you want to do leisurely. You want to get out there and do some wakeboarding and go crazy and do the, you know, hop over those waves and one-handed like this guy does. David does that as well. Um, and just have fun with it. Or maybe jump roping leisurely jump roping, you know, getting a little, or you like a boxer that's like double time, triple time. And you can make a really good workout out of a very inexpensive piece of equipment in your own backyard. You don't need much to do that. Maybe it's weight training, anywhere from kettlebells to um, free weights. What does it look like? The pulley machines. Are you at a gym? Are you um, out on the beach? Where do you want to work out? Weight training is really important. And a lot of women think it's for men. But I'll tell you, or they're afraid of getting bulky. All you do is a lower weight, less or more repetitions or bigger weights um, and less repetitions for those that want to build a little bit more muscle and definition. But especially women too, for our skeletal system, building muscle, and then it helps with posture. It helps with core. You know, if you ever look at a person that's, you know, in their 80s, you see one that's got this wide gait, 
and one hunched over and another one that is standing straight and they're able to walk closer together, they've got a stronger core. They're stronger, they look healthier, they look leaner, they look help, uh, happier. They're, they're not as likely to fall. <laughs> on the aging process, do it for that sake as well as if you're wanting tone, you want to look fit, you want definition. Everybody has their motivation, but find what's going to be yours that will get you out there doing it and keep you doing it. Or maybe it's just lifting those little weights, but you want to do it with other people because it's the social aspect of it as well, not just the strengthening. There's me and a, you know, I, those exercise balls. This is just at a local gym where we go, and not a local gym, it's when we travel. I still work out even traveling. I still make those healthy choices. It's not, I don't turn it off and on. It's who I am. It's how I show up. And I know David does the same and Jamie does the same. It's not like we never vary from eating extremely healthy or always exercising, but it's pretty close because it's, it's just who, you know, it's the lifestyle I want and I feel good. I have clarity of mind. What are the reasons you exercise? Would you put that in the chat? Why do you exercise? As we're wrapping up some other thoughts on that. And uh, soccer. Who likes to play soccer? What other ball would you like to do? Would you like to play fetch with Fido? Play basketball by yourself, playing horse or doing it with a group of friends? How about baseball or softball? Are you on a team? Now, if you are doing things like that, be aware that if you're on the five and one, it could slow down your, your progress. So check with your health coach on the right timing and what's best for your body too. Because if you're carrying around extra weight, um, the longer you hold off on exercise, typically the better that is. You can even not do full on exercise other than maybe the walk until after you've lost your weight. And that's, we see people have the best results from that, more predictable results. But at the same time, we know that, you know, some people are already exercising. We ask you to cut it back in half in time and intensity. And you might even want to go to a four and two. So ask your coach about whether that's appropriate or maybe even a three and three. But I'm going to just really suggest to you work on the weight loss before you work on the fitness because you have the rest of your life to get fit. But I see so many people strive to get to a healthy weight while they're really working out. And it seems to be a, a lifelong battle. Uh, and, you know, it, it can take them longer to lose those last five pounds with exercise than it did to lose the 25 pounds prior to that. So uh, really check with your coach and see your higher level of priorities and your bigger why. All right. So maybe it's football, one of the most popular balls of all. David and, and Jamie have played turkey bowl on Thursday. Maybe it's boxing. Maybe it's standing around posing in the gym looking good in your, in your biceps and your pec muscles. I don't know what your, you know what your motivation is. You know, there's something about having confidence when you know that you're in a place of good, strong physical fitness, and it shows. How about skateboarding? Who would have thought? We have a brother-in-law, 56 years old, that still does skateboarding. He is so fit. He's been doing it forever, and it's, he just absolutely loves it. I think it's his main mode of transportation as well. Or maybe this is your style. Maybe, we roller skated when we were kids, or rollerblading today is very popular, or ice skating. What kind of skates would you want to be on? Okay, maybe it's dirt biking. You know, Jamie and David both love to do things where it's getting out in there. He, David, um, have, do you have a road bike? And a, what, which bike? You have all kinds of bikes. You're even having one custom made right now. What kind, yeah. of, what, what kind of bikes do you like or have? Oh, all of them, uh, because there's so many disciplines of the sport that, uh, and I try to do all of them. So uh, mountain biking, I love getting out in nature, and, uh, and, and usually a lot of people, you can do that together. Like trails like these are all over the place, so you can go out and have fun, just amazing, good time, and uh, really good exercise. And Jamie, how about you? Do you remember that the bike rides that you've done or the mountain biking with uh, Dr. A and David and a bunch of other guys too and other places you've gone? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a good time. To, you, you can have it by yourself, but it's also a, a good experience to have with others. Yeah, I've done it and would like to do it again. I remember you doing it one time and you ran over a rattlesnake in what was it, Arizona, I think it was. <laughs> And another time in Central Oregon where a deer leaped over the top of you. So it's like... <laughs> you're around what you're going to find out there. Yep, this is so true. Or maybe instead of dirt biking, you're out rodeo. I saw somebody else said that they were into horseback riding. So uh, that, that's a very st great sport, especially for core and leg, because you really have to do... It doesn't look like it would be that ex um, exerting on the body, but it actually is. I haven't done it myself, but I've talked to others that have.
or maybe it's crazy extreme sports like uh, snowmobiling. This guy's going crazy with it in the snow. Cold weather's not my friend, but maybe jet skiing. Yes, I love jet skiing. I love going zoomy zoomy on there. And it takes some, you know, if you're really going at it, you're going to be engaging your body too. It's not going to be as much of an exertion as, you know, running or doing a power walk or something, but it is very exhilarating and a fun experience. So water sports, snow sports, what does it look like for you? Uh, David and Dr. A have done hella skiing, jumping out of a helicopter in the middle of nowhere on going onto the snow. You guys are crazy, but you love it, right? It's so awesome. <laughs> that, those are those experiences that you'll remember the rest of your lives, those ones I was talking about. So, uh, and it doesn't happen without effort, but uh, man, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. You know, I just saw what time it was, and I'm just having so much fun with this topic. I hope this is really exhilarating you guys to think about it, and I'm going to say, please hold off again if it's not time, because it could be that it's snowing down those snow banks, or it might be that you're on sand. Uh, do, you know, just choose the sport that works great for you, or maybe it's mud. That ain't happening for me. Sorry, guys. I know there's people who have done those mud runs, and uh, more power to you. Those are those, some of those extreme things, but I'll tell you, after somebody's done with it, they feel like they've accomplished some cool things and they have memories for sure. So back to extreme. Is this what you really want? Or you think maybe something a little more realistic or this is it, share it with your coach. Out um, windsurfing, or is it that you like snorkeling? I have one of those masks I'm gonna be wearing in the Dominican starting tomorrow. And uh, maybe it's just swimming out in the ocean doing it or in a lake doing a triathlon, or just leisurely swimming, or playing a game of volleyball in the water, which uh, the last trip we all did together, um, got to even hang out with, uh, and leisurely with Dr. A and Lori Anderson, and, and just uh, be able to enjoy the pool in just a various ways, and just tread water and have, a, you know, just leisurely time. Or maybe it's, you know, we're gonna tame it down a little bit. Maybe it's archery, get strength, work on coordination. Work on core, holding yourself steady as you do that structural tension in ways that can be fun and, uh, and as a good hobby to do with others as well. Or bowling, good social activity that doesn't burn a lot of calories. So you could do that even on the five and one. So that all being said, hula hooping, adventure, and just the environment makes a huge difference too of where you're at when you do it. So back to the who, what, when, where, and why, along with the how of exercise, how. Do it in the right timing, have the right equipment, have the, if you're really getting serious about it, work with somebody that's a professional to help you with it, your healthcare professional, your fitness trainer, your health coach, nutrition support with Optavia, all of those things are available to you, but do it in the right timing so you don't injure yourself and then you can't work out. I know too many people that go in there and go for the gusto and, it's, and their body's not ready for it. So gradually, even after you've lost your weight, gradually increase the exercise be ready for it. Train yourself to do the next thing. Like David said, marathon, three years. You don't need to do it next weekend. So do it in the right timing and with the right equipment. So is now the right time for you? Hmm. Maybe you need to have a conversation with your coach. If they're not up on that, have them talk with the coach that's mentored to them or talk with nutrition support or check with a, a, a trainer that knows our program well, as well as the best benefit. So there's also a, an exercise video that you can find on YouTube, and I have permission to put this on here. It's used throughout Optavia. It needs to be updated because it was a few years ago, but it's exercise on the five and one plan. And it will give some details. This is really great for you to review. If you're still undecided which direction you want to go, if you want to stay true to your five and one, add in walking, you know, two to three weeks. I said three to four in this video, but um, it's now the protocol as you'll find in frequently asked questions on coach answers. Um, um, actually, Angie, can you put the link where they could find the um, question answer for how to do exercise on the five and one? That's available to you as well. This five minute thing will help you know whether what the right timing is. Check with your coach on that. Check with your healthcare professional and possibly involve a trainer at the same time. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, I know that exercise has added that sense of vitality for myself. It gives me the energy, the strength. And I noticed when I was getting stronger on the outside that I also was getting stronger on the inside. It really supported my emotional health at the same time and uh, doing the personal growth. It's a, just an amazing thing all the way around. And I just really encourage you guys to make that part of your 
um, your healthy lifestyle in the right timing and uh, do it with friends, have fun, be social and enjoy uh, your life, quality, longevity, both. And just thank you for your time tonight. And this audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results related in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.